Shalom. We are now opening a series on the Book of Lamentations, Eicha, towards the upcoming Tisha B'Av, the day of mourning over the destruction of the Temple, destruction of Jerusalem, the first Temple and the second Temple. We will be giving a series of, of a few lessons teaching the book, the, st- the story, the historical story, and the expressions and the emotions and even the religious messages that are in the, in, the, in the verses. I do hope that towards the end of this series, when we're supposed to be marking this year, Tisha B'Av, on the 9th of the month of Av, which this year is on the 9th of August, hopefully, instead of marking the destruction, maybe we will be able to celebrate. But meanwhile, as the temple has not been yet built, and has not been rebuilt by us, we will try and understand the message of the Book of Lamentations, Eicha. The Book of Eicha is put together of five chapters. The first four are organized according to the order of the alphabet, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, the Hebrew alphabet. The first two chapters and the fourth chapter are every single verse is another letter, and therefore there are 22 letters as the number of the, uh, 22 verses as the number of the letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Chapter three has 66 verses because every single letter uh, p- repeats itself three times. Chapter five is the only chapter in the book of Echa which is not organized according to the order of the alphabet, but it is also 22 verses. We're going to start today from chapter one. Every single one of the chapters stands on its own. At the end, there, we will be able to see a wide perspective. Every single one of the chapters stands on its own and it has its own message. Today, as I said, we're going to begin with chapter one. But before we start, one more point. We're not talking here about a book of history. And therefore, the order of the, of the verses are not going to be a chrono- chron- chronologic order. They will be according to the message that the person who wrote them, the poet, the lamenter, wants us to get the message. But they do have a very interesting structure, and they do have a message, and we will try to understand what the message is. According to our scholars, the book of Echa was written by Jeremiah, he who was an eyewitness himself to the destruction of the temple. Not only was he an eyewitness, but the several years before the t- destruction, he was warning the people, and he was ignored. And let us go into the chapter one of Lamentations. Echa yeshvavadad ha'ir rabati am ha'ita ke'almana. How the city, the city which was full of people, the city which was with many, many people coming to visit it, she, the city, has become like a widow. The greatest, Ha'ir Rabati Am, Sarati Bamedinot, Haitalamas, the greatest of, of, among the cities, has become a slave, become a vessel. She's crying, Bachotiv Kebalaila, Vidimata Alechia, and on her cheek she has her tears. Ein la menachem. She has no comforter. Mikol ohavea. Kol re'eha bagduba. Hayula le'oivim. All of her friends, all of her close neighbors, turned their back and became enemies. Just from these first two verses, we see a very interesting motive which goes upon and repeats itself throughout the entire chapter. The description of the loneliness. Daughter of Zion, city of Jerusalem, Bat Zion, is described as a widow. The first emotion which is very strongly described here is the emotion of loneliness. And we know that very often, when something terrible happens, something tragic happens, the tragedy itself is very, very painful. But what can be even more painful is the feeling of loneliness. The feeling of loneliness. As we see in the book, 
which more than any other book in the book in the, in the, in the Bible that talks about the book that only in any other b- b- book in, in the entire Tanakh that talks about the feeling of tragedy, of trauma. The book of Job, Eov. The first few, few, few verses describes what has happened to him, the damages that has happened to his property, to his family, to his body. But that's not where the sorrow concludes the description, or not where the Tanakh concludes the description of the sorrow. The description of the sorrow is concluded when his friends come and for seven days they sit beside him and they don't say a single word, not a word of condolence, not one word of comfort. They sit there for seven days. And only then, and then and only then, did Eov, Job, start describing what he feels. And there was the, the strongest of his pain, the feeling of loneliness. And the feeling of loneliness is much stronger when it is compared to what was before. The description here, Haitaki Almana, a widow. What is a widow? Somebody who had a partner. Ha'ira bati am, the city which was full of people, is now lonely. The feeling of loneliness is much more emphasized when it comes on a story that was... So, the city of Jerusalem, Bat Zion, is describing herself as very, very lonely, comparing to what was before. Then she talks and she repeats, Why is she lonely? The paths of thine are mourning. There are no, where are all those that used to come to, festi- to the festivals? But that's not only that. It's not only the fact that the streets are empty from what was. But there's something stronger than that. There's a description of the enemy, of the other nations, with many, many words that are used. The lamenter, he uses several different descriptions. There's oyev, there's goyim, there's tsar, rodef. Each one of these words describes the, the enemy in different, whether he's chasing, whether he's attacking, whether he's hating. All of these descriptions are describing the descriptions of the enemies. But these enemies, it's interesting, in the entire book of Lamentations, though the enemy that destroyed the temple was Babylon, Babylon is never mentioned. It's actually the closer neighbors that are mentioned. And why is that? It's interesting that the description is, I'm reading, for instance, in the uh, in uh, verse Let's read what we see over here. In verse 8, for instance. Kol mechabdeha hiziluha. All of those who once respected her are the ones that are now dis- dis- disparaging her, are the ones that are now insulting her, are the ones that are now teasing her. So now we're talking not only about nations that came from far to attack her. The biggest feeling of insult is when your friends betrayed her. When her friends betrayed her. It's interesting, in the first 11, we spoke about 22 verses in the chapter 1, the first 11 are described by the lamenter, the person who wrote the story, the announcer. He's telling the story. But from verse 12, Zion herself, Bat Tzion, is talking in first person. Lo alechem, kol not not before you. Nobody can feel my pain. From verse 12 till the end of the, ver- of the chapter, almost every single verse is a direct speech of Zion herself. But there's a dramatic change in the middle. At the beginning, she's talking to her neighbors. I wish that nothing happens to you like what is happening to me. And she's blaming 
Who is she blaming for what's happening to her? Mimarom shalach etch be'atzmotai. From heaven, he sent fire in my bones. Parath reshet liraglai. Like a hunter, he put a net to capture me. Who is this? If we didn't understand yet, in verse 15, Zion says it directly. God has delivered me into the hands of those I cannot withstand. At the beginning, Batzion, the daughter of Zion, is blaming God. And she's talking to her neighbors. But they are ignoring her. Even though in verse 19, Karati Lemahavai, I'm calling my friends, I'm calling my lovers. Hey Marimuni. They lied to me. They false. They as a matter of fact, they even had their d- direct hatred towards me. Their weapons were faced towards me. Where Zion is talking at first blaming God for what has happened. And she's expecting that all her neighbors will condole her. But what happens is, and she's blaming God in very difficult words. For instance, a very strong word is verse 15, Gat darach Adonai. Gat darach Adonai liv tulat bat Yehuda. What is a Gat darach Adonai? A Gat is the place where we press Grapes. I just want to remind for a second, a very interesting story is described also in in Isaiah chapter 33, where Edom, the nation of Edom, is also blamed. And there it's it's a stronger description. In verse 2, Why is your garment red? And why are your clothes like someone treating a wine vat? Somebody who presses the wine, presses the grapes. They do it happily, and they dance, and they press, and all their clothes become red. Zion is blaming God that he's attacking her happily. And his clothes are becoming red with blood. But the neighbors couldn't care less. This story is based on a true historical story. In Jeremiah, chapter 27, there is a very historical description of King Tzitkiyahu. King Tzitkiyahu who was appointed by Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. But at a certain point where he saw that Nebuchadnezzar was getting weak and the neighbor na- 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 nations came over to her and said to Nebuchadnezzar, came over to, to, and said to Tzitkiyahu, please join us, we're going to go against Nebuchadnezzar and we're going to make a treaty with Egypt. She said, yes, of course, I will be happy to lead. And Tzitkiyahu agreed to lead, even though Nebuchadnezzar had appointed him. But, when Nebuchadnezzar came to Tzitkiyahu and tried to take revenge over what he had done, suddenly all of those friends, Edom, Ammon, Moab, they all turned their back. And what did Zion learn from this story? And here we're getting to the final last sentences. Finally, in verse 20, Batzion understands. Re'e Adonai Kitsarli. Look, God, my situation is very difficult. I was trusting the neighboring Gentiles. I was trusting Ammon, Moab, and Edom. But I learned that I should only trust you, God. There is no need to put all my eggs in the basket of the nations. There is no need to expect, there are no expectations from our neighbors. Unfortunately, in our generation, in the past century, we the Jewish people, I witnessed such a situation where even those who were considered our friends, even those nations who were considered our friends, when we were attacked, suddenly they ran away. They sat quiet. They ignored the situation. 
And the Book of Lamentation, in chapter 1, is teaching us. Yes, you can make treaties with nations, but don't put all of your trust in the nations. Don't expect that they will come and protect you in the day of sorrow. In the day of sorrow, put your faith in God Himself. Chapter 1 of Lamentations it describes the loneliness of this great city, Bat Zion, speaking as a woman who has been become a widow, who has been betrayed because she was expecting things from the nations. And this sorrow brings her to finally understand that God is who she should trust. And in the last two verses, she says to God, I am to be blamed, I sinned. But please, God, take revenge over those nations who had betrayed me. If in verse 12 she said, please, I hope nothing happens to you like what's happening to me, in the final sentence, she says, please God, do to them what you did to me. Because betraying is the worst of worst. And the people of the Pins in Batzion, who had also in a way betrayed God, understands here that she has to come back to God and hopefully, we will come back to God, build His temple, and all the nations will be calling in the name of God. He is one, and His name is one.